how to use the video timeline in Photoshop to create all kinds of super colorful effects which can be used at a later project with apply images. I'm going to do apply images later but this is how to set up the video timeline and all of the effects. I'm going to be using a gradient but you could use patterns, images, brush strokes, shapes and much much more. Go to File and New. Create a new document. I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080. 72 and 8 bit and create. I've got the timeline. Here's the video timeline. Completely fresh, nothing in it. You can find that in the window menu and timeline. And the timeline is great because you can now create video timeline. And you can see it here. This is for this layer. It's only one layer, layer zero. Here's the timeline for layer zero. And you can resize this. You can turn around and say, I want it to be 30 seconds. Or just drag it and just click at the end and drag. So you can make it longer. And you've got this video playhead. You can move it back and forth because there's nothing there at the moment. So nothing changes. I'm going to put it at the start. Also, you can expand this out. In the timeline, you can expand the layer and you'll see position, which is the position of that layer, opacity of the layer, as well as style. And that includes like blending modes, but it also includes layer styles, such as gradient overlays. I'm just going to add a gradient to it straight away. Here's the gradient tool. Just use a basic gradient up here and blend mode of difference. So just create something very quickly. Nice, colourful design like that. And you can see the result in the layer. It's got a little preview there. You can see, see it there as well. And you can still continue to move that back and forth. Nothing's changed. The only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to click here, this style. So the style, just click that little bit and it's got a little timer or stopwatch. And then you see this, the keyframes. And it puts a keyframe here. Keyframe will store that style information. So anything like the gradient overlay, all those details will be stored in this little entry here. At the moment, I haven't got style. To add it, just go to layer and layer style and go down here to gradient overlay or pattern. You can combine it with patterns as well. You've got a whole range of different options. Some work well, some don't. Gradient overlay, you can set up different gradients. I'm just going to select gradient there. And you can set it radial, linear, etc. Set the opacity, scale, and there you can see it. And you can move it, you can reposition it, and it will store, the keyframe will store that as well. So as you move it around, you can see it changes because of difference. Just modify it, move it over there, move it that way. So I'm going to go with that. Unfortunately, you can't move this while you've got this open. It'd be nice, but you can't. Click OK. You can now move it. And I'm only going to create two or three of these keyframes. So I'm just going to put it here, and it will create another one here. So you can go here to layer, or just go over here. Double click and bring this up. You can change the gradient. So if you decide, you know what, I want a different gradient. I'm going to go with that. It will keep the other one, but it will blend and smear between the two. Change the radius, radial, you move that scale. Ah, you can change that. You can change quite a lot of things. Just run through it, create all kinds of different designs. Click OK there. And you can see as you do that, just move that. And now you can see there's the keyframe. Now, of course, once you go past it, it stops. I need to add a keyframe at the end or somewhere else. I'm just going to put it down at the end there. And again, double click on that. Change the gradient again. Maybe go for that one, rainbow. A different design. Change the scale. And oh, let's go with, yes, keep that. But reposition it, something like that. You can always go back to it. You can always go to the keyframe. So set the keyframe, move it back there. And you can see as you move it, it changes. But you can always go back and edit it again. So if you decide, you know what? I don't want it in that position. I can move it somewhere else. Click OK. So it's flexible there. You can tweak it later. 
and you can move it back and forth. And as you do that, you can see it color changes like there. Now you can go and add smart objects to it. Smart objects means you can enclose all this information in a single smart object and the apply image, which I'm going to be using in the next video, requires it to be used as a smart object. So layer and smart objects convert to smart object. Whole thing is now yeah, enclosed in a single smart object. All the various positions, keyframes, everything stored, the color effects, much, much more. With this, I can apply filters. So I can go to filter and I can go down to distort. Maybe I wave, twirl, any of those. And you can see the effect there. Number of generators, one, change the amplitude. You can randomize, you can click through that. And that will be applied to the entire timeline. So if I go through there, but the colors change because of those keyframes in the smart object. And you can see as I move it, that will change. The effect doesn't change. The effect will stay the same along the entire timeline. So all the way along, it will remain the same. But you can expand this out. Go down here, you've got a layer again, you've got, you can see all the information there, but you can expand this out. This time, instead of position, you see transform, which doesn't seem very much. It is different though. Position just means where it's positioned. You can sort of move it around. So if I just go over to the move tool, just move it, it will store that information. But now, transform means it stores a little bit more. You can scale it, you can resize it, you can rotate it, and it will store that information. Personally, I'm not gonna rotate it, but you can rotate it if you want. But you can scale it, and that's useful as well. That's all stored. And you can see then, as you go through there, Obviously you've got that, you can't see the rest of it, but you can if you move it, so you can reposition it. So let's put there. At this point, weirdly you've got that bit of transparency there, very strange. I haven't keyframed it yet, so I can click there, transform. So I click there and you can see now I've got a trans keyframe for that transform. I can then move that playhead to say here, and I can resize it again, or go the other way. I may move it out, or reposition it, or rotate it. The whole range of different things. Move that out of the way so I can just resize it a bit. And you can see the effect. Now, because it's a wave, you can see the wave effect has been applied to that. So I just move there. That's quite weird the way it's done it here. It's got very strange. However, that's the way it works. And there is the keyframe there with the transform and the wave effect. Just going to go now to down here, far end. And you can see as I change that, the keyframes of the smart object that's enclosed are changing. I haven't had any color styles or anything else. That's the next stage. So just go to the end. And I'm going to create another slight change there. As I do that, Maybe squeeze that in, resize it again, stretch it out, press it, and you can see again the wave effect. Now the wave effect isn't changed, it's still the same. I can alter it if I want, I can just go up here and double click that and affect the whole thing. So I can modify that, randomize, you can see do that. I'm not going to do that, but you could, if you wanted to, change it. Now as I move that video, you can see what happens, it changes like that. Also, again, style, you can click here. So click there. So that's now can have keyframes. Now it's probably always best to start right at the beginning. I always end up clicking where I don't, I didn't mean to put that there. You can always click there and just move it. You can reposition them. Don't have to keep them in the position. And that sometimes can create some interesting designs as well. So I've got that there. I haven't got any styles yet. So layer. Layer style, and down here, I'm just gonna go with gradient overlay again. Why not? And I'm gonna change the gradient to a different gradient. Maybe that one, yes, go with that. And I could change the other things like scale. All that information be stored in the keyframe. Click okay. 
and then change that again. I say it's weird how it doesn't do it right. Very odd. The, that wave doesn't appear to be in the first bit, the first frame. Okay, that's the case, that's the case. Again, you can go over here, gradient overlay, double click, and maybe change gradient, go for a different gradient. Again, maybe just change some of these scales, change the settings here, opacity, you can tweak that. Click OK, and go to the end. Let's just go to the end, and again, double click, and change angle, change the scale, and maybe change the gradient. So it's got a lot of different changes of grading, got lots, and that's on top of the previous ones and all the previous keyframes as well. So click OK. So you've got a nice complex design here with all these different effects and the wave as well. Well, what you can do then, strange enough, you can turn around and say, I want that as a smart object, the whole thing, enclose the whole lot as a smart object. So layer, smart objects and convert to smart object. And that becomes a smart object. All one thing. And that's what's needed for the apply image. Well, you can still then change this. And as you see, you can see it changes. But then you can expand this out. And you've got transform again. If you want to do that, transform. If you don't, if you want to remove them, these keyframes at any time, you think, oh, you know what? I didn't want that one there. You can always click that little stopwatch and that will remove it. You can put it back to the start and then you can click transform and you can resize, rotate, press return and then go to a different position, resize, move it around, rotate, distort it and create loads of different distortions and designs with that. And then maybe go back there to the far end and again do another one let's just quickly reposition it and resize it sometimes the uh, transform goes out so far you can't get to it but you can do exactly the same as before you can go down to here so go all the way back to the front you can see changes all the way through style click there and with that you can then add a style Again, layer, layer style, and go down to maybe use drop shadow, gradient overlay. Select a gradient, combine that, change the scale, maybe go with linear this time. You don't have to keep radial. Click OK. Go there and change that. Again, gradient overlay, and change gradient, and change scale, reposition it, click OK, and so on. And you can see the result of that. And the whole thing can be combined into a single smart object again at the end. So let's just finish off here with the gradient overlay. Just change that, change the angle, change the gradient, and click OK. And this is a smart object. You can add smart filters to it. So go to Filter. Distort, maybe this time, twirl. So twirl, distort it like that. Click OK. And you can see the result of that. Again, okay. this can all be selected. Layer and smart objects and convert to smart object. So it all becomes one single smart object. Now as I move through this, now it obviously will take probably a bit of processing, more and more effects you add, the more transforms, it's going to take a bit more time to process. But you can see as I move that, the colours change, everything will be changing in that design. And it's still just a layer. And that means you can, if you want to, go to layer and duplicate layer. Maybe apply different effects to it. So duplicate layer, create that. All the smart objects, everything inside it are all the same. And you can always, at any point, double click and change things. But you can also go and add effects to that. So filter, distort and wave. Maybe select that one, click OK. And create a different effect. 
So it's slightly different from the other layer. And then with that, you can go up here. And this is the key thing for the apply image is go to layer, smart objects and convert to smart object. So the whole thing becomes again, a singular smart object. All have to be single smart objects. And of course, if you want to, if you don't want to use the apply image bit, that's the next video. You can also, of course, blend them using blending modes. Maybe go for different soft light. Just try that one, lighten. So we lighten, okay, just go to the video playhead. Now it's going to be slow. You can see it takes a bit of time. It's got a lot to process. And you can see as you run through, the colors change, the positions change, and everything else. But it's just going to take a few seconds to process to create that design. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear. And also, please check out the next video, which is going to be using this approach to create video layers with gradients, or it could be anything else, as I say, patterns, images, brush strokes, anything. And you can use these, combine them, and then use them with apply image to create amazing designs in another file. Thank you much.